Hi, welcome to part two of my conclusion of Mormonism. In this part, we're going to go over what's true and what's not true. First of all, there's a lot to read. You got this thing, you got this thing, you got this thing, just to name a few. Now, I've read all of these, gone over every single page, read every single word of it, and researched everything I could find about it. Now, one interesting note that you can just tell just by opening up the first few pages is that at the very beginning, it's got testimony. You've got three witnesses and you have eight witnesses. Now, take a look at the names there, okay? Hmm. Apparently, a lot of these witnesses, these are the witnesses that actually saw the gold plates. Well, they say they saw the gold plates that the angel Moroni gave to Joseph Smith to translate into this and then took away the plates so that there'd be no proof of it. Anyway, these are all the people that said they actually saw the plates. Amazingly, they all seem to be either related or close friends. So I don't really think that helps. So, after reading this, researching heavily, and taking a look at everything, is there anything in that book that I can conclusively say actually happened? No. Well, let's just, uh, <clears throat> just keep score. All right. So, I can't really prove, or nobody can really prove that anything in the book actually happened. You little Mormons really, really try really hard by stealing pieces of other people's culture. So, no points there. Let's see how Mormonism stacks up to its um, long-lost relatives, I guess. This pen, I am going to mark out everything that does not fit into mainstream Christianity, as far as compared to the Mormon view. <clears throat> Remember this? All right. Let's see. Got God. Yep, he's definitely in the Bible. Uh, Heavenly Mother? No. Uh, Jesus and Satan being brothers, and us all being brothers of Jesus and Satan, and being spirit children. No, I'm going to say no. Earth, yeah, creation of earth, that's in the Bible. Uh, Jesus' death and uh, zombie remorphication, yeah, that's in there. Um, church is being corrupt, all of them. Well, no, that's not really in there either. Uh, Book of Mormon being the uh, reorganization and the, the true word of Christianity. No, no, Christians don't even agree on that part. All right, uh, how about the part where you're supposed to uh, hook up with someone of the opposite sex, have lots of children, and give lots of your money and your time to the church? Sadly, this is a big part of Christianity. Let's see, uh, spirit world. Nope, that's not talked about in the Bible. Judgment day, yep, judgment day's in the Bible. Okay, the three different parts of heaven and the unknown area. Yeah, that's not in there. Okay, uh, let's see. When you get to... Uh, Top tier heaven and uh, Elohim will make you into a god. No, that's that's not in there. Well, let's see. Uh, let's see. You and your spouse being gods and making spirit children of your own. No, that's not in there. You making your own world. No, that's, and making your own rules and laws. No, that's not in there. Yeah. So uh, a lot of it doesn't really live up to the Christian ideals. So you know what that means. Okay. So, how about this guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. I meant this guy. How does that guy compare on a bit of truth? Well, let's see. The revival that uh, supposedly inspired him never happened. 
Uh, let's see, in March 20, uh, 1826, he was actually convict convicted in a court of law in New York uh, State versus Joseph Smith of fraud. That really doesn't help. Let's see, uh, he was pretty much chased out of every town he went to. Um, oh, the Mormons think that he uh, died as a martyr for their religion. Uh, no. Actually, uh, to be a martyr, I'm pretty sure that uh, you can't, you know, shoot back and kill people in the process. Kind of undoes the whole martyrdom thing. So, yeah, when he uh, uh, took out that pistol and, and shot into a crowd, killing two people and wounding another person, that pretty much uh, takes away that whole martyrdom thing. So, nuts to that, huh? Joseph Smith. Definitely a con. Pun intended. Okay, so how about all of the uh, evidence? You know, you can go to Mormon websites and they'll show you all kinds of, oh, look at this, and this, look at this ancient structure and all that. Okay. DNA evidence already blows the whole Jewish people in America thing out of the water. Um, the only thing that the Mormons can really find to try and attribute to an ancient culture of Jews is actually an ancient culture of Indians. And when I mean Indians, I mean Native Americans. So there's that aspect. Um, <laughs> so, let's see, you failed on Bible prophecy, you failed with your prophet, you failed with uh, evidence... And just overall not very convincing. Hmm. I guess maybe if that uh, Angel Moroni didn't just take away those plates, it might be a different story. Of course, then, uh, who knows if it was actually the, the Angel Moroni. Depending on which version, and by version I mean what year, uh, you look at the whole story, you know, sometimes it's God, sometimes it's Jesus and God. Sometimes it's the Angel Moroni. But uh, one of those three scenarios was the one that talked to Joseph when he was alone, all by himself in the woods. He's a boy. Totally believable. <sighs> okay. So. <sighs> we have nothing that proves that Mormonism is actually telling you the truth. And we have a lot of reasons to be seriously suspect of these people. And uh, just so you know the whole story behind Mormons, let's see, what else about them? Let's see. You got Joseph's failed prophecies, so that's that's highly warned about in the Bible that uh, that's a false teaching. Let's see, uh, they're racist. Um, until a couple decades ago, I think it was around 1980. Um, the Book of Mormon actually had the word white in it, and that was replaced with the word pure, so that in the Book of Mormon it says, if you want, you know, being holy and stuff will make you pure. That's what it says now. It used to say, you make you white. Um, so they're <laughs> racist, because uh, show me a black man who's uh, who's been the head of the presidency or, or been a, one of the 12, and uh, I'll, I'll strike that statement down. Let's see, they're extremely homophobic. Prop 8 is just a huge example of that. They're sexist. <laughs> Women are only good for staying at home, cooking, cleaning, and making babies. Yeah. Sounds like a whole lot of fun. Uh, they're money hungry. If you really want to know where your tithing goes, which is mandatory 10%, by the way. You can give extra, you know, other than that. But that 10% goes straight to the church. And it's not like the church spends it on the poor, either. They mainly buy buildings with it. Like, no shit. They bought a shopping mall. I don't see how that helps poor. So there's that. Uh, see, we already covered they steal other people's cultures. Um, they really don't grow by converts. Um, it's, it's, it's hard finding actual hard statistics on this because not the church doesn't really keep track on it. So I'm just going to say it's my assumption. But uh, they only pretty much make up their losses in people leaving the church with 
converts, and I don't even really think they make up that much room. Uh, the majority of the reason why the religion grows is because they are commanded to have lots and lots and lots of children. So there's that aspect. And of course, the policy of milk before meat, which means don't tell them the crazy stuff right off the bat. I'll get more into this in part three. See you there.